Hello again, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to a new episode of Shane Flynn Outdoors. Obviously, this is not a fishing video. We're in the boat, but we're not in the water. Um, today, I thought I would do a couple new things. I did go out fishing yesterday. There'll be a video on that. I caught a few fish. Um, but today, we're going to do an unboxing from a good friend and fan that uh, sent me a, a, a box in with some tackle. Hadn't been opened yet, so we're gonna, I'm gonna unbox it right here on um, first for the first time in front of everybody. And also I wanna talk about um, some of the techniques that I've been using um, the last few weeks. It's caught a lot of bass, show you how I've got them rigged, and then show you one of the new rigs that I'm gonna start fishing. Here it's in sim summer is set in and it's getting hot and the fish are starting to drive down deep <clears throat> and be in different zones. Um, that I'll target bass in deep water. So we'll go over a couple of those techniques um, that are at least one of the new techniques that I'm going to be talking about and then show uh, the one uh, lure and technique that I've been using that's been very successful. But first, I wanna start off with uh, un un unboxing uh, the box that uh, got sent in to me. Uh, this was sent in to me by a dear friend. I've known uh, this individual, his name's David Coleman. And David and I met each other in the United States Air Force in 1990. 1990, 1991, uh, we were both airmen together at Altus Air Force Base, and we were uh, suite mates. We both, we, our dorm rooms were next to each other, and we shared a, a common bathroom for, I guess, it was a couple of years, year and a half, and Dave and I went fishing quite a bit, and uh, we kept in touch. Um, we're both retired now from the Air Force, um, and we still stay in touch, and we're going to do some, we're going to get a fishing trip together sometime soon in the very near future. He is the only individual that I can recall that has dug treble hooks out of my scalp. Um, we were out fishing one day and I, we had a, let's call him an amateur fisherman, if you will, put the old Rapala uh, stick bait into my head before we even really got fishing. It's like his first cast, three hooks in my head and David got them out of my scalp. Actually he saved me because I deployed to the Middle East <laughs> the following day. Um, so I didn't have to go to NIF and not, not fly out. So anyways, short story. But hey, let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Again, David, thanks for uh, sending this out. Um, we're doing it live here right now for the first time. I, don't, I do not have an, any idea what's in there. Dave just said I'm gonna send you a, uh, a box with some tackle in it. And what we'll do is we'll go through it. Wow, and did he ever send some a box with some tackle in it? So I'm just gonna take this stuff out one by one. Oh, first thing he sent me, Z-Man Chatterbait. Man, love me a Z-Man Chatterbait, and it's in a very good color for me. Um, it's in a green uh, shad um, that's a, a, called Green Pumpkin Shad. Really good color here in, in Virginia. So, see what else. Actually, he sent me one in silver and one with a gold blade. So, two Chatterbaits. Thanks, David. Um, Taylor Man's Swim Jig. Man, I love me a swim jig, and it's a rattling swim, swim jig. So, Taylor Man swim jig, custom lures. So nice, nice. Green pumpkin seismic toad, earth shattering action. I bet I'll get some action out of that right there in the coming week, weeks and months. The super swimmer sexy shad. Really nice. I know I'll get some uh, use out of that. Uh, probably on the rig that I'm going to show you guys here later, you'll probably see that thrown real soon. All right, and uh, he did mention this this um, this actual bait because he's seen the video where I was using a Zoom Fluke. And this is called the Lake Fork Shad. Uh, he said they are much a lot better action than the, the uh, Zoom Fluke. So I will definitely give the Lake Fork Shad a, um, a try. Now, I didn't tell you, David lives in Bossier City, Louisiana. So he fishes for big bass down in Toledo Bend and places of that action. So that, you know, uh, he's not far from uh, Lake Fork, Toledo Bend. I mean, just all the good, the good lakes. Um, and then he gets in a, a Sun Guild Swim Shad with extra, with the, with the jig and the extra the trailer. Awesome, I'll definitely get some use out of that. And he sent three, wow. Some more swim baits from Cliff Pace, who was a Bassmaster Classic champion. He also, his wild crawl, and 
He has rad shad. I did see the rad shad before. This looks like a really good bait. I'm gonna open that up. Definitely a different looking bait. Definitely use that as well. Man, he's in a lot of stuff. Thanks, Dave. Um, again, VNM June bug creature bait. Man, can't go wrong with this right here. I've used this in the past. It's a really good lure. Um, and it's really similar to what I'm going to show you guys that I was using today or using the last few weeks. Just a different brand. The Kevin Van Dam um, Swimming Shad. Really good lure there. Definitely get some use out of that. Oh, that was another one of the uh, Lake Fork swim baits. The Little Dipper. Wow. This looks like a great bait here, too. This is another swim shad. Look at that color. That is definitely a different kind of bait. Probably going to get good action. I'll put that. That is the exact color. Probably not the same brand name color. It's called Houdini, this color. But that's the same color combination that I was using yesterday catching fish on, uh, but only in the Kitex version. So just a different color there. This one's called the California 20, different color. Another sassy shad, um, the rage tail. I have definitely caught some fish on rage tail in the past. So thank you, David. This is the Rage Menace. Really good bait as well. Oh, man. Another Lake Fort swim. Wow. So, not one, not two, three. Gosh, it's a really good color chatterbait here. Four, five. Did I get that? Right? One, two, three, four five chatterbaits david thank you so much definitely get some use out of these right here yeah this color right here is a killer in the fall really good really good colors and chatterbaits i would definitely get a good use out of those and last thing in here <laughs> i think david knows i'm a big uh i'm a big spinnerbait guy so another spinnerbait and oh wait Something in here, huh? And a reel. And it's a Shimano, which I really, Shimano Stratic. I will definitely put this to use without a doubt because I'm fixing to buy me another medium, medium, uh, seven foot medium rod that I'm going to be using. Um, so that will save me a reel. So thank you so much, David. Man, you really. You really did it up, and I appreciate all the uh, all the baits that you uh, that you gave me. I will; <laughs> they will all go to good use, and you'll probably see them on a video in the very near future. All right, thanks again, Dave Coleman. I really appreciate you uh, sending me all those lures. Um, I will definitely uh, put a lot put those to use, and you'll be seeing some uh, fish caught on some of the specials, chatter baits, all of it, all of it. Great, great lures. So. I want to take a, uh, a minute uh, to talk about what I have been fishing here the last few weeks um, that I've caught a lot of bass on. So I just released a video called A Good Day Fishing on yes yesterday. Uh, I was out on Hunting Run Reservoir where I just caught a lot of bass. Um, actually, um, probably, I, I I'm going to go say safely caught 20 bass, probably more, and actually caught catfish too, which you've seen on the video. Um, but I had a really good day uh, bass fishing. The day prior to that, I was on the lake and I was throwing totally different lure and did real well. It was raining. I set that video, uh, 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 set that video out a couple weeks ago. I caught it a rainy day on the lake um, and did real well then too. But um, the success, the lure that I was using, um, the, the last video that I put out um, was the Kitek. And the Kitek Sassy Shad, four and a half inch. I got some right here on four inch Sassy Shad. Um, I'm sorry, Easy Shiner, not Sassy Shad. The Easy Shiner by Kitek, right here. Um, been doing real well on this bait. And I've been using it on a Ned Head rig. Um, you can see right here, it's on a regular, It's it's a, this was, 
I think it's a quarter ounce Ned head rig. I don't want to get it real. I didn't want the head to go straight down real fast. So I did a little lighter than I usually like to. Um, so it's been, gives a lot of action. This tail is very active. You don't have to reel it fast. I mean, it's really a good action lure, the, the Kitech Easy Shiner. Um, I really, I have probably in the last two weeks reasonably caught 50 to 70 bass on this. And now the, the, the color does matter. I will tell you, I, let me tell you, once you, once you, once you are successful on lure, you go out and you buy all kinds of different colors. And I've got all kinds of different color Kitex here. Um, I went and bought quite a few different colors, but I'll tell you the colors that have worked for me the best. I'm going to set them out here right now. Um, and the colors that have worked for me the best, the first day um, that I used was the perch color, okay? I used the Kitek perch color and caught bass after bass after bass. Not only that, caught catfish after catfish after catfish. I think in one day, one fishing day, I caught a five channel cat. I'm not mistaken, it might have been one or two more or one or two less, but I'm pretty sure it was five channel cat. Went out the next day, caught three more channel cat. And I was only out two hours the next day. Um, I caught them on the, the perch color, all the bass on the perch color. And the reason I say color matters, I ran out of this color and I went to a different color um, and I didn't catch, I didn't, the, the bite changed. I didn't get as many bites on it. Um, now what I went to was called the golden shad and I will tell you the reason I bought this color is uh, I was watching one of uh, an episode on your next cast and Titus Pope was doing really good on the Kitek and I asked him what color he was using he said golden shad now he was fishing on a different lake so I picked this color up didn't work as well on hunting run I think the dark back on the bait made a huge difference the water was ultra ultra clear the day that I caught this I was using this lure, or using this color, I should say. Um, now, yesterday I was out, and two days prior, and I was using the color called Copperfield, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, I'm sorry. Mossback Golden Shad. Nope, not that one. It was Copperfield is what the color I was using. Don't have it handy here. I think I might be out. I think went through a whole package of them. Yeah, so it's called Copperfield. Um, here's one right here. I said, um, this is a used one. It's talking about the color that uh, Dave sent me in the Sassy Shad. It's this color right here. The water was a little dingier. Um, something's going on in the water right now. I don't know if it's an algae bloom, but I was fishing the perch color. I switched over and got more bites. Um, you know, people say the color doesn't matter and I'll be the first one to tell you a lot of times color doesn't matter but when the fish get finicker summer sets in yeah color starts to matter a little bit so if you if you are you know successful on something like the Kitek Easy Shiner which I really like um, don't abandon it just because you're not getting as many bites as you want maybe check change the color because this is a really good lure so what have I been fishing it on I've been fishing it on a seven and a seven foot two medium light action rod um, this is actually a Saint Sakana SXR8 um, in me, uh, medium with a light fast action tip eight pound test line um, and I really I'm a big fan of the Ozuri top knot which I have right here the Ozuri top knot is what I've been using um, on my on, on these medium light rods great um, great line uh, the medium light with the Ned head because it's a narrow a narrower a smaller diameter hook get good hook sets I've had a few throw them out but you know that's that's fishing um, but this gives me the feel this medium light rod on light pound test line eight pound test line gives me good feel I can actually feel those bass on the fall hit the lure and set the hook so um, you know your your real rod and reel setup does make a difference and I think uh, the medium light rod and rod with the uh, eight pound test line is uh, pretty good, a pretty good combination. I, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I haven't caught any big bass. I think the biggest is in the three pound range, but I caught a lot of pound, two pound, three pounds, you know, two, two and a half pounds. 
So a lot of fish have been caught on that Kitek Easy Shiner. So just want to you know give you an idea. Real quick, I'll just show you how I'm hooking it. Just um, where you can have an idea because you do want to try to get this straight. So let me get let some line out here. So you know you got the net head rig. You know I got the longer shank hook. Okay, it's quarter ounce like I said. And you really, if you look at this, you want this to be straight. So when do you run it in and in bringing the hook out? What I do initially when I get a jig head, a new one, is I just go, all right, I'm going to measure right there. I'm going to go into that portion and then come out. So come out, run it in right down the middle, right there, and bam, there it is. Pretty, pretty straight right down the middle. And um, you want to try to get this as straight as possible. I mean, if it's a little off, it's a little off. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, but yeah, that's how I rig it, and it uh, works really good. Am I going to rig this other ways? Probably. Um, I think the Easy Shiner's got good action. Maybe drop shot it? Maybe, I don't know about Carolina rigging it. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, you can, you can rig this with, the, with this type of, not this big, but with a screw in um, a catch and rig it um, weedless if you want to. And this is a weighted one. You can get these in smaller. This is a five aught, way too big for this lure, but you can get them in smaller versions. So there's different ways you can, you can uh, rig it, but definitely a good lure. I'm very uh, pleased with that Kitek Easy Shiner. I highly recommend it. So one other thing before we go, I was gonna talk about um, a technique that I'm gonna be using um, coming up during the summer. It's usually been a pretty good weapon in the summer when the fish start hanging out on deep ledges and things of that nature. Some of you probably heard of it, probably used it, um, and it's called the Carolina Rig. I'm gonna do a little something different with the Carolina Rig this year. Usually what I do with the Carolina Rig is I use a medium heavy action bait casting rod with a heavy sinker on 14 to 17 pound test line. I'm gonna do something different this year. I am gonna go somewhat light, medium light. Actually, I'm gonna, this is a medium light um, St. Croix, seven foot two. Again, medium fast, uh, fax action tip. I think this is a, uh, the St. Croix Premier. It is a good rod. Um, and of course, most of all my reels just about is the, are the uh, Daiwa reels, which I really, really enjoy the Daiwa reels. So the reason I'm doing this is I wanna do a smaller presentation on a floating worm um, to see if I can get more bites. And I am gonna change, the other thing I'm gonna change is the size of the hook that I'm gonna be fishing, and um, actually the size of the weight. So I wanna get this Carolina rig to flutter down slowly, and I wanna drag it real slow, just a little bit of bumping as we go. So I'm going to take, what I usually use is a one-aught regular drop shot hook is the size hook I'm gonna use. I like the reds for drop shot and small. I mean, just my personal preference, you can use any color you want. And I'm gonna start it with, off with a, the sinker and the hook rig will be on this three-way barrel swivel. So it's a three-way barrel swivel. Pretty easy setup, you know, tie it on. Um, I, I use, I'm gonna get my, my glasses on here. I like to uh, tie a double polymer knot on all my all of my knots. And you might say, Shane, well, there's a lot of knots. You're right. It is a lot of knots. Um, but I'm pretty confident on knots. And I'll just show you my knot real quick. Probably have seen the polymer. I, I tie what we call a double polymer. Basically, you double your line. You take it, make one, two, then take the loop end, run your hook, whatever it may be, through that, cinch it down, and that is a double polymer knot. Usually the difference between that and regular polymer is the single polymer, you just go wrap it once. Both good knots, I've just always tied the double polymer, something my dad always taught me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two liters. Um, one liter is gonna be about 12 inches, 12 to 14 inches. And that's gonna be my that's gonna be my weight line. So after you got all your knots tied on the Carolina rig and you got everything rigged up, it should look like something like this. 
you got eight to ten inches your sinker out here your worm or your bait um, this is like I said a z-man floating um, minnow and this should be the way it should you know you can shorten this leader up here on the bait or you can shorten or long you know lengthen the leader on either on the weights as well this is about 12 to 18 inches out here and then about 12 inch on the sinker now you can use anything you want on the on the end here I just prefer a floating uh, worm of some sort I'll tell you another one that I really like is the KVD the dream shot um, these work really good I use the KVD dream shot as well um, with any floating any anything on the end will work I just like the the bait to float up a little bit and give it a gives it a little bit more uh, action and keeps it in the zone for the fish a little bit better so that's just my technique for the uh, this year's Carolina rig like I said I'll I, I may go to the 15 or the medium heavy action uh, set up on a bait caster we'll see um, but I'm gonna try on the, the medium light uh, to see how it works out you know all you can do is try it and uh, typically you know either you're successful or not uh, I have a feeling we'll be pretty successful with it um, just stay tuned and you'll see uh, we'll be fishing with it before you know it so uh, this is the this is it for this edition of Shane Flynn Outdoors. I'd like to thank everyone who's uh, subscribed, and if you do like this uh, this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, share, and like. And everyone who's subscribed, please share. I really enjoy sharing uh, sharing my fishing experience with everyone, and uh, I'll keep it coming. So until next time, uh, tight lines and good luck fishing.